What is good friends, I'm here to bring you High vs Eternal Spirit Hype Match for Smog on Snake Draft. And uh, this is his only rocker, so it's gonna be Rocks, Earthquake, U-Turn, Roost, Gliscor. I think it's gonna be Momentum Spam. U-Turn on this, this, and then either U-Turn or Volt Switch on this to get in the Breakers. In this case, the Breakers are Kyurem and Greninja. And Tangros uh, has to be AV on this team. Helps him with Coco, helps him with Alakazam outside of this. Helps him with Greninja. And just a good Gloomon, uh, just a great pivot. Uh, Defog has to be on this, on this. I'm thinking more so Defog is probably on the Coco. Because uh, Coco can at least force out Toxapex and kind of keep T-Spikes off. Uh, we have seen teams like this used in, um, in World Cup from high. Um, I think ABI built for him in World Cup when he used a team like this. And Blunder used a team also like this with um, U-turn spam into breakers in um, Smogon. Smoke on tour. Eternal Spirit brings a sand team with a bulky backbone, Megaladia's squad. I'm not sure if this or this is the Z-move user. Megaladia checks Zygarde really well. This Landris doesn't have to be bulky, it can be offensive Landris. If Landris is the Z user, then I assume he's gonna be lefties or balloon on the drill. If drill is the Z user, then the Landris could be like off plate or lefties or some other item. Also, I like this um, if they are both offensive because they break down each other's checks. They can break, uh, they can weaken opposing Lando for each other, can weaken opposing Celestila, and then I assume it's gonna be T-Spikes on the packs that just helps um, Eternal Spirit ward down opposing defensive cores um, for these mons, and then it also helps him for a potential late game Megaladi. The Tita, like, I think the Tita is probably a bulky variant, but if the Landers is bulky, then the Tita is probably banded. Like, I think either the Tita or the Lander, one of them is a bulky variant, and the other one of the two is an offensive variant. So turn one, high cannot Oko this Pex. Uh, he can Fusion Bolt and just attack, or he can go hard into Coco to get it in before T-Spikes, because I assume Eternal Spirit is just gonna throw off a T-Spike here, knowing that he can live any one hit from the Kyurem. So Hai can uh, either attack or bring uh, Coco out, and I think this is just a Toxic Spikes, Scald, Recover, and Haze Toxapex. Again, I don't know which team these guys are on. Uh, teams will be in the thumbnail uh, team logos. And what else was I gonna say? Yeah, he has a defensive backbone with like Celesteela Pex, and T-Spikes just makes a lot of sense on this team. So there they go up. So Hai goes hard Coco. Um, yeah, probably is Defog, and he just wants to get it in before the T-Spikes go up. So now uh, Eternal Spirit can live any one hit here outside of Electric Z because he uh, has to be sp death packs to help with opposing Greninja. So if he wants to predict the defog, like it's unlikely that High is gonna just go for Electric Z because Eternal has two ground types in the back and High also wants to get rid of the T-Spikes because they are really annoying for his team. So Eternal Spirit could um, probably fish for a burn here with his Scald. Because if he clicks T-Spikes again, um, it just becomes risky because Hai can potentially nuke him if he's Z-Electric. So he does just throw off a Scald, does get the burn. Now we will see if the Coco has leftovers. We see no leftovers, so he's either Shooker or Z-Move. I'm thinking he's probably Z-Move Coco, which makes me think that the Kyurem is most likely Life Orb and the Greninja is probably Specs Battlebond. He U-turns out, Eternal Spirit, give, Eternal Spirit gives no fucks and stays and I think he just got the T-Spike back up. Uh, High can obviously not risk going hard Gliscor here in case Eternal went for a Scald because the Toxic Orb is not activated just yet. So he goes in the Scissor, he just wants to get the Mega and U-Turn out back into Coco, I think. Coco's already burned so can't get status, can't get poisoned, I mean. And now um, Coco has to either go for Roost or Defog here. Eternal Spirit now switches out into Titar. Doesn't go into Drill, which makes me think that Drill might be on a Balloon and he doesn't want the Balloon to get broken just yet. Um, so if this Tita is banned, he can fire off an Edge. Uh, if he's bulky, I don't know if they run Edge. But Hai probably wants to um, U-turn or Volt Switch. He already showed U-turn, yeah. He probably wants to U-turn out here. And into what? I, I guess into Scizor. Because he doesn't want the Tangrus to get poisoned and he also doesn't want to go hard Glisco in case this Tita has Ice Beam or Ice Punch. So Scissor is uh, most likely to play the one that he's going to U-turn out into. This U-turn shouldn't do anything to the Tita because the Coco is burned. Also, I'm going to open the Kalk here on the side to see... Um, to see if this Tita is bulky. Tyranitar. So if he's choice banned a Tita, the U-turn would have done a little bit more. So I'm thinking this definitely has more bulk investment than choice banned a Tita. And the damage did nothing, so that's not Bandit Tita. Because um, Bandit Tita will at least, even if Scissor's max defense, Bandit will at least do 44 or 42, I think, to Mega Scissor, even if Scissor's max defense. So that's a. Like, it's somewhat of an offensive Tita, but it's not Bandit. So Landris comes out and just goes hard for Earthquake. 
Hai gets the uh, Gliscor in and throws his rocks up and a turn spirit reveals the sword stance confirming what I thought at team preview his double offensive grounds uh, Excadrill plus Landris so this is most likely Z move and Hai just has to pick a fodder here because uh, Gliscor cannot touch the Landris it's pretty obvious that he's the rocks roost U-turn earthquake Gliscor so what does he want to sack here he wants um, he wants the Greninja for the Lari. He wants the Kyurem because that can like break the packs and the Steel. I would potentially. What? So what is he gonna sack? I mean, Scizor has a tough matchup because it's kind of walled by packs and Celesteela. But on the other side, Scizor can get momentum. Hmm. Tangros is still good in this match. Uh, I think you either sack. Hmm. You want Coco to devoke the T spikes away, and if Coco is Z move, it can potentially get a surprise kill. I think he's either sacking like Sis or Tang. Um, this is tough though, I wouldn't want to be in highest position as he goes Scissor, and this is what is it, Rocky Moss Sky Strike? It's Sky Strike. Scissor gets bopped, just dies in one. Um, I think earlier Eternal Spirit just earthquaked, um, predicting U-turn on the turn where High switched hard out into Gliscor. I think he earthquaked, he just wanted to chip on the Scissor, predicting a U-turn, right? And then he got a free SD knowing that the Gliscor cannot touch this um, Landris. High might have thought that this Landris is not an SD variant, that's why he brought the Gliscor out, I'm not sure. Now he has to go into either Kyurem or Greninja, I think, to threaten out the Landris, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Those ones can outspeed it, but they will both get hurt by the T spike. So this is already amazing for Eternal Spirit. But damn, Eternal Spirit, like he's wild. Like a lot of aggressive players, but <laughs> sometimes he goes a bit too far with his um, staying in with packs on Coco multiple times. Like I completely get why, but it's still risky. I get that you um, have your ground types in the back, but still, dude. But he's definitely one of the most fun players to watch for me and. Like these aggressive plays are so fire, and also um, like if they don't, if they work, he's like the super goat. If they don't work, it's still fun to watch. So Greninja comes out. Uh, Eternal Spirit obviously doesn't want to stay in here. If this is Ash, he doesn't want to give him Ash from. So Pex is always the play. Uh, High breaks the switch into Pex and gets up, gets up a spike. So this is most likely, um, yeah, just specs into spikes with Dark Pulse, Shuriken, and Pump. So Eternal Spirit could probably pull a double here, because um, High is either gonna go Coco. Or he's gonna go Gliscor, because Gliscor now has the Toxic Orb activated, means that it can switch into the packs. So what is a double that covers both Coco and Gliscor? Mm, Mega Lardy is an option. If Excadrill is on a Balloon, it's actually a really great play here, because it covers the Coco, and if it's on a Balloon, Gliscor cannot Earthquake it. So if that's the case, then uh, Excadrill is a great double. Otherwise, maybe he wants to go into Lardy. Okay, I did see it. We're gonna rewatch the few turns that we missed. He doubled into Excadrill, predicting either the um, Coco or Gliscor, and he is on a balloon. Now, High is gonna U turn to break the balloon. Eternal Spirit just goes for the rapid spin. Now, he obviously wants to go back into his Greninja. Uh, he cannot go on the Kyurem because then it would get toxic, and Greninja is already on a timer. And now, Eternal Spirit stays in, goes for SD, predicting the Greninja to lock into Specs Spikes. Uh, he can just rapid spin, or he can also go for Iron Head here. Does just go for rapid spin and Hai decides to, um, I guess, sack the Coco to get rid of the toxic spikes as Eternal Spirit can just go for Iron Head. And now he's forced to go back into Greninja. Um, uh, well, he can go into Kyurem technically, but I assume he's just gonna go back into Greninja. And Eternal Spirit is like pretty far ahead at this point. Dude, like, some of his aggressive plays are so, like, even if you know the opponent is gonna make, uh, is gonna like over predict, like even if you if you're pretty sure he's gonna do that, it's still crazy to make those plays because if they go wrong, that could put you in a bad spot. But now he's pretty far ahead, and even if the Greninja gets Ash still somehow, um, the Greninja is, is poisoned and gets chipped. At this point, I don't think it's even that bad for Eternal if the Greninja gets Ash, because if the Greninja locks into um, Dark Pulse. He can just pursue it with Tita after, and if it locks in the water move, he can just go Pex and get the T-Spikes back up. And then the T-Spikes would stay um, for the rest of the game, if, he, if they go back up. And they still affect 3 out of 4 members. Well, Tang and Kyurem would um, get hurt. Greninja is already affected by them. So now, um, t I, don't know, I don't even know if he's gonna switch out now. But on the other side, Hai kinda has to play aggressive at this point, because he's so far behind. But I don't even know if he can come back from this. 
But like th this was like super fun to watch as he stays in again, goes for Iron Head and bobs the Greninja and he spikes. But yeah, like I said, even if the X cat died there to um, Water or Dark move, he could have then acted accordingly, either gone Tita and Pursuit Trapped it or gone Pax and got the T-Spike. Okay, I deceit for a second again, but we are back now. I can bring out either the Kyurem or the Gliscor. I mean, it depends if the Kyurem has a move to Oko this. Because Life Up Ice Beam from Kyurem, I think that's like 70 to 85. Uh, so Gliscor comes out. Excavable should always be jolly um, to make sure that you outspeed Heatran outside of Sand. So Excavable should outspeed the Gliscor, assuming the Gliscor runs speed for stuff like Zygarde. Um, but he might be a super fast Gliscor. Um, at this point, Eternal Spirit has so many ways to win this game. Um, his Ladi, I assume it has Ice Beam and it can beat the Tangos and the Glisco on its own. So all Eternal Spirit has to do is chip down the Kyurem with T-Spikes or Rocks or whatever. Or maybe even both. And then Ladi should just be able to win this. Uh, he could also potentially win this late game with his x here. If he switches out, gets up T-Spikes and gets rid of Glisco, then x can beat down um, Kyurem and Tangros, especially with T-Spikes and Rocks, like I said. But yeah, um, standard Gliscor is slower from what I can tell than max speed Jolly. Yeah, you would have to run so much speed on Gliscor to outrun Excadrill. Like, I know some people go that fast, but I don't... You need 303... Um, you need like 200 speed EVs on, um, on Gliscor to outspeed Excadrill. I guess it's possible that he has that much speed. So at this point, High, uh, High is so far behind. So does he U-turn predicting the switch or does he just earthquake? He U-turns because he's so far behind he has to do something. But like, Kyurem comes out. Um, Eternal Spirit can... He can do a few plays. He can sack the Landris or... I, but I assume that's not what he wants to do. I think he's just gonna go T-Tile honestly, get the sand up. And also, the electric terrain only lasts for one more turn. Um, so if he really wants to, he can sack something and then go to Pax after when Electric Terrain ends and get up T-Spikes because uh, outside of Terrain, Pax should be able to live a hit. That Fusion Bolt does a lot in Electric Terrain and it is added... Why can I not talk? And it is Live Up Kyurem, um, which was quite obvious because the Coco uh, was most likely the Zemo user. Well, I guess it could have been Shuka Coco, but I'm thinking it's Z. And the Grenis Specs, the way it has been played. So... Does he want to keep this t tire as sac fodder? Yeah, he goes hard into Pex, so he wanted to keep that as sac fodder. High goes into his Tangros, and now Eternal Spirit can just get up the T-Spike. And then... That's step one to bring Kyurem in range from Ladi. I mean, High can knock off the Black Sludge, or he can go back into Kyurem before T-Spikes go up, but he goes Gliscor instead. Uh, which is, uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter at this point. Eternal Spirit has this wrapped up unless he goes for some super wild choke. So he gets up two layers. That way Tangros, um, if it stays in longer, and Kyurem, if it stays in longer, the Toxic will rack up. That actually doesn't do that much. Uh, I want to cut that. Does this pack have some Fizz Dev investment? Because, uh, yeah, if it's Max Spadev, it would do 47 to 56. So I guess it has a little bit of fist dev investment, not that much. Maybe like maybe like 80 or 100 in defense. I think if you want 100 in defense, that ensures that you live um, Landers Earthquake from Max like Max Attack Landers Earthquake. Or was it Earthblade Landers? Like there was some s some specific investment like like 100 on packs. Or was it 140 that lets you live um, Landers Earthquake? I don't remember if it was Scarf or if it was Earthblade Landers. By U-turns um, after the Landris came out on the Earthquake, and now the rocks are up, which means um, this this Kyurem is already on the timer from T-Spikes. If it ever switches out, it also has to take rocks. So it's going to be in range from Ladi, and uh, Ladi should be able to win the game. Um, at this point, it doesn't even have to be a CM Ladi. It just wins with Ice Beam, probably, if the chip is done. Well, the Kyurem most likely has Roost, and um, Eternal Spirit can potentially sack the Tita here, so I assume High might just go for Ruth, but he goes in the packs instead, which is also a completely fine play, because if the Kyurem attacked there, then it would have taken Toxic damage plus Life Orb, and then next turn he can still sack the Tita. But I'm pretty sure he roosted there to predict him to sack the Tita, because the Tita dies to hazards, and he wanted the Roost to be healthy, predicting the sack, obviously. So good play on High, um, but not like it makes a difference now. 
So Eton can go for recover here or sack the Titar. How much would Fusion Bolt actually do to this? I'm curious. 60? 68. Okay, that's good damage. As I assume he just goes for recover. Now, um, this might actually be a roll that, yeah, obviously he doesn't want to risk this. So I think he's just going to sack the Titar here. I might roost here, predicting the sack. Yeah, he goes hard into drill. Okay, he doesn't even sack the tar. Predicts a uh, roost slash fusion bolt. Okay, buddy. And um, I forgot the speed here for a second. I think Kyurm is faster if it's max speed. I'm pretty sure it's 95 base. Yeah, yeah, Kyurm is faster and Life of Ice Beam kills the Excadrill. So at least High gets his, high gets his kill. Doesn't get 6 old, but like, yeah. So Heavy Slam comes out here or Protect. Heavy Slam is free, I think. Because, yeah, he's super healthy. Now, he can either Protect or he can just Heavy Slam again. Or he goes into Sex Tita. Like, I don't think it matters at this point. Because when Kyurem comes back and has to take rocks. So now I can just go Ladi. He can either Ice Beam or if he's a Setup variant, he can set up a Calm Mind. Mm. And he says Offensive GG, which is, like, obvious. it's obvious that he wins. But, like... It's still kind of an early GG. <laughs> so now uh, it is Combine, and now I assume it's gonna Ice Beam or Surf. Yep, Ice Beam gets rid of Gliscor. Ice Beam will obviously be Tangled when we won, and Kyurem is so low. Um, he didn't even need a Combine boost for that. So Ice Beam kills the Kyurem as well. I thank you guys for watching. Um, Tangled is gonna be. Twit KO, I think? Yeah, because it's AV, it eats one. And I think Eternal Spirit plays another match in when tomorrow. I'll be bringing you guys that as well. Stay tuned for that. Have a fantastic day. Smash that like button if you enjoy. And damn, Eternal is wild. That's all I'm saying. I probably said that like five times. Maybe only three times. I don't know.